Everyone, hi. Bruce Moffs and LCSW, Sunridge of Nevada, coming at you with another breakdown tonight. The song we're going to be doing is by Reason, called Color Dreams, Killers Part 2, and it was inspired by a J. Cole song called Killers that gave him the inspiration for this. Okay, as before, we'll talk a little about myself. I'm a licensed clinical social worker and have been so for the past 25 years. I received my master's in social work from the University of Georgia, and I had to do a two-year intern internship after graduation, take a national exam to become fully licensed. I work with thousands of people from ages of 3 to 83, inpatient, outpatient, going to the home. And I have worked with every possible situation involving trauma, PTSD, bipolar, schizophrenia, drug and alcohol abuse, and all kinds of sexual issues as well. In addition, I have testified in court hundreds of times to judges and attorneys on what people need with their mental health issues to try and be successful once they are able to leave the system or not be in the juvenile system or the adult system at all. In addition, I've done dozens of trainings, mostly to law enforcement, on how to work better with the mentally ill as well as to the general public. And finally, every two years I have to do 40 CEU credits, continuing education credits, to keep my license current so I know what I'm talking about. Okay, here we go. This song is very interesting to me because it's really graphic and I like the way he comes in and out of the song to explain various points. The line I'm going to break, and I want to just clarify this also, I only break down the lines that I think are clinically significant. So what I do is I explain, the, I read the line, and then I give you my clinical analysis, and then I go back. So an, uh, line analysis, line analysis, that's the format that we've been using. All right, he goes like this. Look, I said, Mom, I just killed a man. Body is still trembling. Can you feel my hands? This is not uncommon. Uh, I've had people tell me this. Their hands get icy. I've had people tell me when they shook the hand of someone that just murdered somebody, the blood literally runs from your hands. And the hands get icy. And I've had this heard from more than one person that's been shared with me. All right, now, this case, this story, this song is not random, not made up. It's not just out of Hollywood. This actually happened. This happened in Milwaukee in 2013. And what happened was is that a person by the name of Demario Jackson who was 24, was charged with first-degree homicide over the murder of a 14-year-old named Yafit Moore. And the issue was over a house party across the street that got out of hand. There was a fight, and Moore came out of his, I'm sorry, Jackson came out of his house and began to randomly shoot people. Yafit Moore unfortunately caught a bullet in his brainstem, which essentially killed him, and three other people were wounded to various degrees. And what happened is, I think that the judge and the people in the audience, when I say audience, the jury, I think was so horrified at the callousness of it, they gave him an extreme, extreme sentence. And that's what this is about. And it goes like this. It says that he did 20, he had a certain amount of coke, I'm sorry, a certain amount of weed in his system, but it was the callousness of it that made it happen. So what happens is, is he starts giving an ode to his mother and to the mother of the person that he killed. So he changes the story a little bit, but it's still that same premise of what happened. And you see the overture where the judge is saying, we feel from Wisconsin state court system, you must do multiple, multiple years. So he goes like this. Here's the line. I guess I got, just got to chill for 20 years. Whoa. That's scary to say it. That's scary to hear it. I mean, to put yourself on park for 20 years is frightening. But it's like almost like a throwaway line. Then the line goes, people say they love you, but ain't breaking me out. But you ain't breaking me out. I'll probably die up in this blank place. Yeah, I've had people say this to me. Once you get into prison and they process you and they give you your clothes and they give you your bed and you see where you're going to be staying and those doors close behind you, they say it's a sound you never forget the rest of your life. Because your life now is going to take a different trajectory. Next, okay, I've accepted that and now I'm finding peace. And you try and grow and see the ramifications of your decision. You try. Hopefully you get some insight to what led you to being so self-destructive. The next line, long nights I've been trying to sleep. Sleep doesn't come easy. 
restless, restless, restless. When you're at ease, you do not sleep well from the tension and the anxiety and the stress that you're dealing with. I put a bullet in them. I took your heart from you. I've worked with enough parents that lost children to violence, were suicide, were drug overdose. They're never the same. It's not that I took his, your, 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 your heart from you. There's a hole in your heart, and it can never be filled. That's what happens to these parents. They tell me that. Nothing is ever the same again because they've lost a child in a way that's unspeakable. Next, your daughter walking, who's going to catch her when she starts running? Yeah, running towards disaster, looking for love and companionship in all the wrong places because the man that's supposed to be there to guide her is not around. Okay, next. I thought I was being gangster when I took his life. Now I can barely sleep through a night. I thought, quote, quote. I thought, I thought. I didn't think it through, but I thought. I thought people, I, you know, I thought people are so naive and lie to themselves. I thought, I thought there'd be no real ramifications to it. Now I can barely sleep through the night. You can't because it changes you forever. I get it now. Blank these color dreams. I get it now. Blank these color dreams. Next four lines. Blank these color dreams. Blank these color dreams. Ask any vet who has seen real combat or extensive battlefield exposure, and they'll tell you it takes it. And you take someone's life, it takes a toll on you. You're never the same again. It changes you. And if you say that it doesn't, you're lying to yourself and to the people around you. And you get no pleasure in sleep. Next line. And to my brother, I claimed I love you more than the rest. Next line. If I really loved you, how come I guided you to your death? It's a great two-liner. But in the end, you did not look out for him. You were not in role model mode. You needed to be in that mode. You weren't there for him. What do you think was going to happen? Disaster, terribleness, horrible situation. Pops shook, no more role models. Next line. You were only 12 when I got locked up. I'm going to read the next couple lines. One, two, three, four, five, six. You were only, one, two, three, I'm sorry, seven. You were only 12 when I got locked up. Pops shook, no role models. So the block looks like the only option. Yeah, you're 12 years old, I'm locked up, I'm not home. Pop shook, no dad, no role model, no adult male role model figure. So what happens? The block looks like the only option. I've seen this thousands of times. My perspective is this, the only option. Reason really sums it up. Well, truth. It's easy to hold a gun till you have to use a gun. Everyone is tough holding it, shooting it, going to an empty alley. Okay, okay, okay. Don't worry about it. All right? I got a gun. Well, guess what? People that are going to hurt you, they have guns as well. They're also armed. Okay? Next. Instead, I showed you how to get it popping, firing, and you took to it. Now, nah, you never shook to it. You never got frightened. You, you were drawn to it. Either trouble wasn't around, you would look to it. Throwing upset, you know, signs, you would let them know you weren't no blank till you run. Okay. Well, what did you prove in the end? All this talk, I'm tough, I got a gun, don't mess with me, you know, here we go again with the Glock, you know, hey, look what I got, look what I got, powerful, powerful handgun. Well, they have Glocks too, and there's repercussions to that. Okay. Then he goes, unless you ran into multiple Crips, then you would take off. And I say it this way, Crips have guns too. You know, and, I, and then there's that stanza of like five lines. You let them blanks know you'd be drawn, you'd be down for your blank. Thinking in your head, big bro, be proud of you, blank. I hate to have to be the only way for you to go. Have to, for you to have it to be the way for you to go. What's even worse, I couldn't make it to your funeral. You're a no-show at your brother's funeral, but you can't get time out to see him and, and say goodbye to him. Seen those five boys in the video in the driveway with the gun, you just see the forebodingness that, that that's going to be death coming very, very soon. 
you know, you're down for who? Who are you down for? Blank these color dreams, next line. Blank these color dreams, blank these color dreams. Now come the prison letters, okay? How many parents have shown them to me? I've sat in, I've sat in living rooms, I've sat, sat in kitchens. People say, Bruce, take a look at this. Bruce, take a look at this. I see the inmate's name, his numbers, his identity. Okay, I'm sorry, I made a mistake. What have I done? Send money. That's what you start to read. I, I messed up. I'm on medication now. I'm getting therapy. I'm learning how to control my anger. But I've been in those houses, and it's a horrible, horrible thing to sit through for me, let alone the parents, or mostly the moms of these young men. Then it goes like this. I know you feel like a failure to all your peers, mama. That line is so powerful to me because that does happen also. I've seen it so many times if you go to church, synagogue, mosque, I don't care what religion you are, there's thousands of them, but I've seen this so often. If you're an active goer and your kid's dysfunctional, you start to disengage, you start not to get involved because you don't want to keep on saying things like, yeah, my son's on parole, my son's on probation, what's your son up to? Oh, he's getting married, third kid, buying a house, going to grad school, starting his business, became a union plumber, bad man oh they're going to disney taking me to disney with the grandkids what do you got to say it's all negative and then he goes like this they let me out this second i wouldn't even search for you because he's thinking i think i'm unlovable you know wrong no normal parent thinks that way you didn't have a real relationship i got kids do they make me crazy absolutely would I ever give up on them i can't it's part of my flesh and blood then it goes like this. I get your letters and I wonder how you still love me. You care so much. I'm going to go back to one ahead of it. You care so much you would kill for me. I get your letters and I wonder how you still love me. Next line. You say you pray every night and you still feel for me. And blank, if you could, I know you probably would do this bit for me. That's how parents feel. I've sat in these rooms. I've talked to these parents with these grandparents of these not kids anymore, and that's what they'll say to me. This is how parents will always feel. I've had parents say to me these very lines to me. You know, I pray for you. I love you. I still feel for you. I would do the time for you if I could. And you know what they sometimes will say to me? Can I pray with them? Or can I pray for them? And I'm like, look, I'm going to go to synagogue this week, and I'll throw in some prayers for them. I mean, I have a list in my head of different people I pray for every time I go, that they should just find some relief, find some happiness. And they cry in front of me. And I end up saying, here's a tissue. You want another tissue? You want another tissue? I leave the house to go to my car. It drains me. Sometimes I got to stop and just sit on the park bench for a few minutes just to decompress. All right. Then it goes like this in the end. It says, blank these, and you get uh, 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 choking. He felt boxed in. Not an uncommon way to feel when you first go to prison. A lot of times people are going to attempt suicide because it's such a scary change in life to survive. Particularly when he said, I'm just going to have to do 20. He's saying it, but he's not really feeling it. And you first get into that prison for a long sentence, it is terrifying. Now, I want to just add some things. It's a great song because it's honest and real. And it's the truth. Him walking in and out makes it even more visceral and impactful to me. Question I always have is when does the cycle break? And when do you make the changes to improve your life? I, I read the comments, the hundreds of them. Great song, real, this is what rap should be. It's not fake, it's not false. This is the truth. Okay, are you going to make changes in your life to be productive and get away from that? That's what the video is supposed to mean to me. I'm going to make changes. Dads, if you're not there, the streets are seductive, and they're always there, and they will always eat your kids alive. Trust me. I've seen it hundreds of times. Just an endless meat grinder. Great song again, great message. But are people watching this breakdown really listening? Good luck. God bless. And God bless out there. And please, no more weeping shattered moms.
when I saw that mom getting picking up that envelope with the prison letter, bothered me. And people go through this for years and years and years. If you love your mom, don't do it. If it's the heat of the moment, learn to back off. That's all I'm saying. You know, a senseless act over a fight when all you had to do was just walk away from it, go back into bed, get a drink of water, call the police. Couldn't do it. Young man's life doesn't end before it even begins. He's the ripe old age of 24, and three other people are walking around with bullet pieces in them for the rest of their life. And their PTSD and their anxiety and their depression and their trauma is never going to go away. It's crazy. And you look back on it, people say things like, well, coulda, woulda, should, I wouldn't have done things differently. I'm sure DeMario thinks about that all the time. But guess what? Yafit Moore doesn't have that chance. It's over. So please, think, 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 make the right choices, and break the cycle of dysfunction and violence. Bruce Moffs and LCSW, Sunridge, Nevada.